Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is book. B-double-O-K. Oh, you're always saying that. You bet your life. The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! I thought he was still hibernating for the winter. Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx! Thank you. Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples. George Fenneman, who's first to try for it? We invited some nightclub hat check girls and some ballpark vendors to the program tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Betty Schumann and Mr. Al Weissman. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, you beautiful people, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. <laughs> I mean you, Betty. Yeah? <laughs> and if you say the secret word, you'll split $100 between you. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Mr. Uh, Weissman. Oh, I've seen you be at the ballpark. Huh? Thank you. What ballpark do you do your hawking, uh, Gilmore? Huh? Hollywood ballpark. Hollywood. Huh? What kind of items do you sell to the ball fans? Peanuts, Cracker Jacks, soda, popcorn, cushions, programs, novelties. What beer, kind of novelties? Flags, hats, baseballs. You mean if you get hot peanuts, that's a novelty? Huh? <laughs> Tell me, uh, Al, is there much difference between the taste of your cushions and your popcorn? Well, <laughs> in the color. And uh, Betty, uh, sh uh, Schumann? Is... Schumann. Schumann, huh? You're a mighty pretty girl, Betty, huh? Thank you. At what nightclub are you employed, Betty? At Ciro's. Ciro's. Pretty expensive joint, isn't it? Ciro's isn't a joint. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, it's a pretty expensive honky-tonk, isn't it? Ciro's isn't a honky-tonk either. Well, at least we agree it's expensive, don't we? Ben? Maybe for some people. That's true. Some people do find it expensive. <laughs> Only the people who go there. <laughs> what do you do at uh, Ciro's? I'm a combination hat check and cigarette girl. Well, you've got a very nice combination there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, tell me, uh, uh, Betty, uh, do, do women check their hats in your honky-tonk? Very rarely, mostly coats. What kind? Oh, chinchillas, mink, sable, Persian lamb. You mean you have all those animals in that little room? <laughs> Why do women check those valuable coats? I should think they'd never want to let them out of their sight. Well, if they were to take them to the tables with them and they got up to dance, they'd be left all alone. You mean some skunk could come along and go away with a mink? <laughs> Do people check other things besides uh, hats and coats? Occasionally. Do any of your customers uh, ever check their husbands? No, but I had a man check a toupee once and a woman check a girdle. <laughs> I don't know why a woman would want to check a girdle. If she stayed in a nightclub long enough, she'd be strapped anyway. <laughs> <laughs> why would a woman check a girdle in a nightclub, Betty? I don't know, sir. I didn't ask her. It wasn't any of my business. Well, I consider it mine. Huh? <laughs> the next time a woman checks her girdle in your place, you tell her I want to know why. <laughs> now, how much do you charge for checking a hat? There is no charge. There isn't, eh? <laughs> what do you mean, no charge? In a nightclub, they charge for everything, including the air you're choking in. <laughs> no charge at all? There is no charge. You tip whatever you wish. I see. Whatever tip I want, eh? That's right. Suppose I left an asparagus tip. <laughs> <laughs> now, Frank, put it. Take me out of the ball game. Do you, do you, uh, do you get many tips like uh, Betty gets at Zero's? What, from those baseball fans? <laughs> I have never heard Venom expressed in such simple terms. Huh? <laughs> I didn't realize you were so sensitive, Al. I thought perhaps occasionally you got a foul tip. Uh... <laughs> I thought occasionally you got a foul tip, you know. <laughs> now, what kind of a costume do you wear, Betty? And, and make it brief. <laughs> 
Well, it's strapless. It's very short. And we wear long opera hose. Well, that's brief enough, I guess. <laughs> Doesn't an outfit like that make people stare? Well, yes. Mostly the women. You mean the men don't stare? <laughs> yes, but in a different way. <laughs> Naturally. Well, a man wants to see what happens to his hat. That's <laughs> well, you two have taught me a lot about night work. Now, let's see if you're going to be the ones who get the chance at the $1,500 question. Now, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life. When you take your car for service to a DeSoto Plymouth dealers, notice all the special tools and equipment in the shop. The equipment that helps the expert mechanics do better, faster work on your car. Find out also about the two great new cars he sells. There's a brilliant new DeSoto, truly a magnificent car, truly a new car, front to back. From its impressive full-width radiator grill to its smart-looking, newly designed rear end. You'll be amazed by all of its new features. You'll enjoy driving it, for DeSoto is the car that lets you drive without shifting. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, the beautiful car that likes to be compared. Now, let's see if you two will get a chance at the $1,500. Fenneman, bring them up to date on the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $1,500 DeSoto Plymouth question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You select the drinking songs as your category. Is that right? That's right. right. Now, here's your first question. How much of the 20 are you going to try? Ten. 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 All right, $10. Here's a song everyone should know. Play, Jerry. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. Now, how much of the 30 are you going to try? 20 $20. What is the name of this song? What do you think, kids? There's a tavern in the town. They now have $10. That's a shame. All right, now here's your third question. You have $10. How much are you going to try now? Five. Five dollars? Give me the title of this song. Okay, Jerry. Whip and Poop. The Whip and Poop song. Oh, we're on the way again. They're now at $15. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 15 will you try? All of it. All of it. Shoot the works. Give me the title of this song. Kid. It's Little Brown Jug. I'm going to give you another chance to make some money. Get this one right and you win $10. Now think hard. Who is buried in Grant's tomb? Grant. General Grant is right. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now don't go away. You may get a chance at the big question. Now before I forget it, I want to thank George Rosen and Weekly Variety for the special showmanship citation... They gave us last week. It was a very high honor, and all of us on the show are sincerely grateful. Fenneman, you may proceed. Groucho. Yes. The secret word is still book. It is. Perhaps the next couple will say it. We invited some hospital dietitians to the program, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Shirley Phillips. Her partner is a married man from the audience, Mr. Charlie Harvey, and here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your bet your life, and if you say the secret word, you'll divide $100 between you. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Miss uh, Phillips, eh? Shirley Phillips. That's right. For a dietitian, you're a pretty tasty dish. Where, where are you from, uh, uh, Shirley? Cedars of Lebanon Hospital. Were you, were you born there? No, I'm from re really from San Francisco. Oh. And Mr. Uh, Harvey? Yes, sir. Are you one of the Harvey girls? Uh, <laughs> where, where are you from, Charlie? Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. What sort of work do you do? 
I'm a former grave digger. <laughs> well, why did you quit? Is everybody dead? <laughs> why did you, Why did you quit, huh? I had a better chance for a job out here, so I came out here. What, what are you doing now, John? I'm a warehouse man now, sir. What are your duties as a warehouse uh, man? Well, I'm filling crates now. Shipping crates. <laughs> Same job, but you're indoors, that's all. <laughs> you, you are married, eh, Charlie? Yes, sir. How did you meet your wife? Well, she was working in Kelly's Oyster House in Philadelphia, reading tea leaves and palms. Reading tea leaves in an oyster house? Huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> what happened? Well, she read my tea leaves in there one time and told me that I was going to marry a widow with two children. And uh, a while back a later, I came back over there and I said, Well, I've looked all over town and I can't find a widow with two children. <laughs> and she says, Well, you've been looking at her every, t- every time you come into the Kelly's oyster house. She was a girl. <laughs> Well, did you marry her just so you wouldn't make a liar out of her? Is that right? <laughs> why, uh, you're not married, huh, Shirley? No, I'm not. Why, why aren't you married? I'm not ready to get married. How long would it take you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, is that the only reason you're not married? <laughs> no, but it seems like every time I meet somebody, either they're not interested in me or I'm not interested in them. Well, don't be discouraged. <laughs> Someday you'll meet a man and neither one of you will be interested. <laughs> and then you'll have something in common and you'll probably get married. Huh? <laughs> Just, uh, what do you do on your job, uh, Miss Phillips? Well, I write diets and I check trays. Do you make up the diet for the entire hospital? No, I don't. Who, who does that, Sharon? Uh, the head dietitian. The head dietitian? You mean there's a diet just for heads? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Has anything unusual ever happened in your kitchen, Shirley, like putting something appetizing on the tray? <laughs> Apparently, there are a lot of ex-patients here tonight. <laughs> well, sometimes uh, for breakfast, We've had some people order cheese blintzes and Finn and Hattie. Cheese blintzes and Finn and Hattie, huh? Well, it's the same plot as Abe's Irish Rose, huh? <laughs> Has anything embarrassing ever happened to you, Charlie? Well, not embarrassing. I wouldn't say embarrassing, but I was Well, what would you say, huh? <laughs> I was called out of bed at 1 o'clock in the morning to go back to the cemetery. Were you alive at the time? <laughs> I was the foreman of the grave diggers, and I was the only one that had the key to the tool house. It seems that uh, some fellow had gone through the... Somebody was eager to get buried? And... <laughs> no, it seems like he had a few too many, and he was walking through the cemetery and fell in an open grave. <laughs> Just looking at you has made me hungry, Shirley. Uh, how much food should I eat in a day? Well, that all depends upon the type of work that you do. Uh, a laborer should have about 3,000 calories, and uh, a white-collar worker about 2,200 calories. Well, I'm a white-collar worker, but my laundry didn't come back. Huh? <laughs> now, answer my question. How much should I eat, Shirley? Well, what do you do? Well, I can do 85 in the wind's with me. <laughs> I not only can do 85, I am 85. <laughs> now, answer my question, Shirley. How much should I eat? Well... Uh, looks like you sit down most of the time, so... <laughs> I'd say about 1,500 calories. That's about one meal a day, isn't it? <laughs> Is there any food that's on most diets? Oh, I'd say uh, meat or milk. Mm-hmm. In most cases, you'd say milk is good for the figure? Yes. Have you ever looked at a cow? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's been nice talking to you two, and as soon as we're through here, Shirley, you and I will go out and have a banana split and some mashed potatoes. <laughs> now, let's see how well you'll make out in the battle for the $1,500 question. You're going to play your bet your life. Run your $20 into more than the other couples, and you get a chance at the big question. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but Fenneman's offstage remind our listeners. 
The nightclub girl and the ballpark vendor lost all their money, so these people have a clear field. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected well-known husbands and wives as your category. Is that right? Yes, sir. Now, how much of the 20 are you going to try? Ten. David O. Selznick is married to a famous actress. What is her name? Uh, Teresa Wright. Do you agree with that? Uh, I'm sorry. It's, it's Jennifer Jones. Yeah. And they have $10 now. All right. Well, you're down to $10. Anyhow, you're going for $1,500 <laughs> tonight, and that's the big money. Now, how much of the 10 are you going to try? Five. Five. Five dollars. Who is actress Lynn Fontaine married to? Alfred London. Alfred London is right. <laughs> Now they have fifteen dollars. All right, now you got fifteen dollars. Here's your third question. How much of the fifteen are you gonna try? Ten. Ten. Who is designer Gilbert Adrian married to? Janet uh, Gaynor. Janet Gaynor is right. <laughs> They're climbing, they have twenty-five dollars. Well, uh, you're the gainer now. Now here's your last chance to be the other couples. How much of the twenty-five are you gonna try? Twenty. Who is Lily Pons married to? Um Andre Castellanos. Andre Castellanos. And they wind up with $45. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And I will soon know against the chance at the $1,500 question. Folks, I don't have to tell you that summer is almost here. No, Fenema, but you will anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and summer means that the best days to drive your car are right on top of it. I wish you'd drive more carefully. I will, Groucho. And more enjoyably, too. Because now's the time when I and thousands like me... I won't comment on that horrible thought. <laughs> now's the time when we smart car owners get set for those fine summer weekends and for vacations by visiting our DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Fenneman, that's your idea of a vacation? Your family visiting a DeSoto Plymouth dealer? Well, the time your car spends at a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's, folks, will make every mile you drive this summer more enjoyable. That's true. More economical. Yes, it is. Safer. Yeah, and safer. For expert service and checkup at a fair price, see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. All right, Fenneman, who's leading in the race for the $1,500 question? Well, the dietician and the married man are ahead with $45. And the secret word is still book. We invited some sets of identical twins to the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Janny and Joey Pope. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, kiddies, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if you say the secret word, you'll divide $100 between you. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Identical twins, eh? I'm glad somebody told me. <laughs> Otherwise, I might have accused one of you of being up here twice just to confuse me. <laughs> which one are you? Uh... I'm Janny. You're ja Janny, yeah? Yes. How do you do? And, uh, and which one are you? I'm Joey. You're Joey. Uh-huh. <laughs> You're Joey Haha. <laughs> It's an Indian name, huh? <laughs> Is your name Janny Ha Ha? <laughs> I've heard of many Ha Ha, but I don't know. <laughs> you two certainly look alike, and I think you should know each other. Janie, shake hands with Joey, huh? <laughs> I don't anybody move. Stay right where you are. <laughs> now, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Janie, uh, how, how old are you? I'm 20 years old. Joe, you are Joey, huh? Yes. <laughs> Since you're identical twins, you're exactly the same age? Yes, I'm 22. <laughs> You're 22 and she's 20? No, I'm 20 also. <laughs> oh, that's like uh, Joey Ha Ha, huh? <laughs> uh, Janie, are you, are you working? Uh, no, I'm going to UCLA. Uh, and Joey, uh, where do you work? I go to UCLA also. How can your teacher tell you apart? Well, when we're together, they can tell us apart, and when we're not together, they, they can't tell us apart. <laughs> Why do I get involved in things like that? I'm not a kid anymore, and you kids are not helping either. <laughs> Janie, would you mind going over what she just said, slowly and succinctly? <laughs> well, what she means is that when we're separated, uh, they can't tell us apart, but when we're together... It's easier to tell us apart. <laughs> Cocktails, anybody? <laughs> <laughs> Joey, does everybody have the same trouble I have? I'm Janny, that's Joey. Oh, this is... <laughs> Answer my question. Does everybody have my trouble? Well, yes, I guess. What's your trouble? <laughs>
Well, I'll tell you, Mrs. Anthony, I come from a family... <laughs> I come from a family of five boys. I was standing here five minutes ago minding my own business when <laughs> suddenly I went off my rocker. <laughs> Now, Janie, do you have any boyfriends? That's you, Janie, over there. <laughs> yes, I have How one. How do your boyfriends tell you apart? Well, uh, they have a lot of trouble telling us apart. But on the other hand, we have trouble telling them apart because they're also identical twins. We all get mixed up. <laughs> have you ever played any tricks on your boyfriends? Well, for instance, one day uh, I uh, walked into class and uh, this boy ran up to me and said, Joey, and I didn't want to say I was Janie. I said, yes. And he said, can you go out Saturday night? And I said, uh, I'd love to because Joey hadn't made a date for Saturday night. So Joey walked in and I told her and she already made a date. So I had to go out with him. And, <laughs> and so we both happened to end up at the same place. And, and I introduced the boy and uh, he said, well, which one is Joey? And we wouldn't tell them. And uh, they still don't know to this day. I guess it's just as well. <laughs> Have you any experiences like that that you'd care to relate, Joey? That's you, Joey, over here. <laughs> Well, in high school, we had quite a lot of fun. Uh, Janie was better in geometry, and I was better in history. And uh, I uh, flunked a geometry test once, and so I had to make it up after school. So Janie went and took it in my place. She <laughs> <laughs> knew all the answers, and so she brought the blue book up to the seat. <laughs> Joey, that did it. You just said book, and since that's the secret word for tonight, you and your partner spent $100 in cash, compliments of the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. Oh, thank you. <laughs> now, where were we uh, when you dented my checkbook? <laughs> well, I brought the blue book up to the teacher, and as I was handing it to her, we both wear different rings, and I forgot to change my ring, and uh, that's the only way the teacher could tell us apart, and... She knew I had a pearl ring, and this girl that brought it up had a ruby ring, so she caught us in the act, but she was very nice about it. <laughs> Just kicked you out of school, huh? <laughs> well, Joey, uh, you two not only look exactly alike, but you even dress exactly alike. Do you always dress the same? Oh, yes. Yeah. What about boyfriends? Do you, do you like the same uh, boyfriend? Oh, no. Uh, that, we've been very lucky about it. Yeah. <laughs> Your taste is quite... Uh, very much the same really? twins. But yeah. the twins are alike, so it doesn't make any difference who goes with who. You don't care which one you get, huh? No. No. <laughs> I guess when you've seen one twin, you've seen them all. Right? <laughs> well, it's certainly been nice looking at you girls. Uh, now we're going to see if two heads are better than one. You're going to play your bet your life. You beat the other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $1,500 DeSoto Plymouth question. I can't tell you how much the other two couples won, but Fenneman's going to remind our listeners. The dietitian and the husband are ahead with $45. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected animals and birds of fact and fiction as your category. Is that right? Yes. All right. Now you have $20. How much are you going to try? $10, Harper. $10. Harper, Ten, $10. Harper, <laughs> to be Al Ritz. <laughs> All right, Janie, that's you over here. No, I'm Joey. Oh, no, not <laughs> now. From now on, you're Janie, huh? And you're one of the Dolly sisters. Okay. Right? You're going to try $10, and uh, what animal do you associate with Mrs. O'Leary? Cow. A cow is right. <laughs> Sharply, I have thirty dollars. All right, now you got thirty dollars. Remember, you're going for fifteen hundred dollars tonight. Now, how much of the thirty will you try? Twenty. What bird do you associate with Edgar Allan Poe? Uh, raven. Raven. The raven is right. <laughs> They're climbing. We have fifty dollars. All right, you got fifty dollars. Here's your third question. How much are you going to try? Thirty. Thirty, I think. Thirty. All right. What bird do you associate with the ancient mariner? Oh, um, um. Uh, wait a minute now. The, uh, seagull. Oh, it, it was, was a dove. It was a dove. No, it was a gull. <laughs> we just studied that uh, last uh, week. Well, uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't, I think, I don't think you had your mind on it at the time, though. 
It's the Albatross. Oh, yeah. yeah. The they now have $20. Well, you've still got $20. Now, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 20 are you going to try? Oh, all of it. What invisible animal do you associate with Frank Fay in a successful Broadway play? Rabbit. Product? The rabbit is right. <laughs> they wind up with $40. And that means the dietician and the husband with $45 get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. When your car needs attention, it's important to get the very best service you can get. That's why you should always drive in at the sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. For there's where you get a top service job every time. Expert factory trained mechanics working with factory approved tools and equipment do better work on your car and they do it faster. That means money in your pocket. Add to this the DeSoto Plymouth dealer's constant desire to treat you fairly and squarely. And you have all the reasons why it will pay you next time your car needs attention to take it to a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here's the dietitian and the husband, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question, Groucho. Here we go for $1,500. Ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so think carefully and please no help from the audience. Here it is. Children the world over know about American Indians and early pioneers because of the writings of one of our greatest authors. He wrote The Deerslayer and The Last of the Mohicans, among others. Who was this man? All right, what's the answer you two have decided upon? I think it's James Oliver Kirkwood. No, you had the first name right, but I, I'm sorry, Charlie. It's James Fenimore Cooper, so that means the big question next week will be worth $2,000. Well, you lost the big money, but you won uh, $45 in the quiz. Congratulations, and thanks to both of you. You bet your life is a John Goodell production. Transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You'll Bet Your Life. Presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week, the big question will be worth $2,000. Good night, folks, and remember... Just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. <laughs> Folks, here's a tip from the National Safety Council. When driving, look ahead of the vehicle ahead to give yourself more stopping distance. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Thank <laughs> you.